Hello. Right now I'm videotaping uh, Orlando Install Fest on July 6, 2019. This is an install fest where people of like-minded and uh, interest in open source and Linux get together and talk about Linux and open source uh, software and hardware. So today we're going to have a presentation on boot uh, boot devices and uh, making boot USBs. And then over here we have a 3D printer. Hopefully the the person that brought this today will also tell us how he started using it, where he got it from, and things like that. We also have some equipment here on Adreno. That's that's Adreno, right? Come off here All right. and pull it. Yeah, I love it. But I, for this purpose, I need one for all my TV stuff. Mm. That's um, three eighths. You could probably design one. And I, I assume it doesn't need a lot of force. No, mm. it just needs grip. Do you need a? Do you need a? I do with my fingers, but or I have to use a wrench sometimes. Do you need a slot like this, or a bigger slot, or? or oh yeah, the wire is on there, and the slot's got to be a quite a bit bigger. I wonder how big the wire is. One, um, five sixteen. This official st install oh, really fest cool. started oh, this, yeah. this morning on Saturday at 10 a.m. And we have people first trickling Saturday in. The first Saturday of every month. As one of the founders has pointed out to me. So I've got to go out and get my laptop and my, all my USB sticks to get ready for the presentation on booting. Any computer, almost any computer, from a USB stick. So you Linux is my preferred operating system, but Microsoft Windows 10 will boot from a USB stick. Now, which distro will you be demonstrating today? Linux Mint 18 or 19? 19.1. Okay. In 64 bit and in 32 bit. That sounds great. So we can boot either of the older. But by the way, uh, Ubuntu, with their next release, is not going to support 32-bit. Right. So I'm surprised. Built a 32-bit computer since 20. Right. I, I was going to say I'm surprised we're still uh, somebody still uh, creating those anyway. I got like 60 of them. You got 60. Okay. And they're perfect for. Internet and school, uh, children's homework and stuff like that. That's true. But some people just want the processing power. Yeah. Of a 64-bit, so they can yeah. do astronomy or mathematics, you know. Virtual, virtual you know, labs. Virtual, uh, you know, I can go virtual in 32-bit, but there are limitations. Yeah. And plus, with the 64-bit, you you basically double your memory as well. And we want to remind people that we're talking about the size of the word, how many letters are in the word that the computer used to process. Yeah. That this company has how many, yeah, 32 bit word or 64 bit, which means that 64 bit can address more than 3.2 gigabytes of ad, of uh, in a name. Um, that's the limitation of 32 bit. 3.2 gigabyte of memory, 3.2 gigabyte address. Replicator. That's the limit. Yeah. Rep Rap is, is, the, is, is the replicator. Replicator. So it's replicator. Replicator. Now, I'm going to also talk about smart firearms. Like a smart gun? Yeah, like smart gun. Okay. Uh, because we've all got experience, a lot of experience, decades of experience. Well, thank you, sir. A lot of experience with weapons yeah. or with smart guns? No, with computers. Oh, okay. My wife can wear it. Who 
Very nice. So, and she loves burgundy, and I think that's burgundy. I would have called it brown. Brown, yeah, it depends on the light. Okay, as I was saying, um, we have a lot of experience, decades of experience with computers. Right. And anything that man break, makes, man can break, or, or it can be hacked, and uh, like Microsoft has. 50 million virus identities that, that can be used to attack it, and the bad people know about it. Huh. So, smart guns are not very smart. <laughs> they can, the battery can go dead. The, there's all kinds of things that can happen that are very bad in a defense situation. And they are not prime, ready for prime time. Okay. So... Gee, I'm sorry, um, but s some politicians want to see smart guns. Um, yeah, if they really work, we'd all like to see them. Maybe. But uh, all the ones that have been tested and tried fail. So we're going to talk about why electronics fail. Not focus on guns, just mentioning that there aren't any on the market and there's a reason. I see. Now, USB files, um, um, electronic memory drives, you know, that are SSDs uh, that you can use in place of a hard drive in your computer to store program. They have a failure mode that they go into because you can write to an electronic device so many times, so many cycles, before it just wears out. It's so we have those issues. And we also have the issue of high intensity um, electronic fields, like when lightning hit. It's not the lightning that kills people or cows. It's the induced PDPs. voltage in the cloud yeah. because you get approximately 5,000 volts per meter of conductive material. A cow's foreleg and rear leg are the conductive material across almost two meters of cow. So it goes up 10,000 volts across its heart and <laughs> respiratory system and you have a herd of dead cows. So that's one lightning bolt in a field can do that. Same with humans. You get voltage across the right arm and the, uh, any of the other three appendages and the heart's in the middle. So What's that train? you'll see uh, people like me who are trained in the military to work for electronic circuits with our jewelry off our arm, our hand in our pocket, and we're one-handed. Well, why not just get an electrostatic uh, wristband? Electrostatic don't protect you from electric shock. Mm. Electrostatic bands have one mega resistor in series with that wire that goes to a good ground. That causes it to bleed off electrical energy and electric charges slowly. Mm. Where lightning is a fast-acting medium, and you know, overwhelm that little wire. Okay. We'll, we'll hear, we'll hear, we will hear more about Patrick's uh, project in another video. Thank you very much. And Thank you. I'll have another video coming up soon. Thank you. Bye bye.